I love thirds. Three is the magic number. Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Transformers Dark of the Moon, or Transformers 3, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> so yes, this uh, movie came out 2011, so three years ago, blimey. me. Um, and the story is that um, basically the Transformers, car there was a cargo ship that was escaping the war with the Transformers. It landed on the moon. And it was keeping Sentinel. It was Sentinel Prime's cargo ship, and he had these pillars that he was protecting. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, it kind of revolves around the moon and assassinations and stuff. And then, basically, it ends up being that the Decepticons want to basically bring Cybertron to Earth. That's pretty much it. That's the best I could explain it. I apologise if that was a bit iffy. But it also kind of revolves around Shittle Abed and his um, his new job and his new girlfriend. <coughs> so yeah, <clears throat> Transformers 3. Um, I like it. It's good. Um, I'm surprised actually because I didn't quite know what I thought of the Transformers movies for a while because I hadn't, I hadn't actually, I hadn't seen them for ages. So um, yeah, I'm not, <clears throat> I wasn't really sure what to sort of say. I didn't know my full opinion on Transformers Dark of the Moon. I mean, I saw it twice at the cinema. Once in 2D, once in 3D, just to compare. Um, but, yeah. Um, Dark of the Moon is good. Um, yeah, I like it. What I mean, it's fair to say that it is an improvement on the second one. So, um, the plot is a little more coherent. And... It's not as annoying as, like, it's not as over-the-top as the second one. <clears throat> it does have over-the-top moments, but they're only sort of in the first half of the movie. Like, <coughs> the first hour uh, is kind of annoying and comedic, but, like, some of that cheesy humour that you just didn't really like in the second one, they've, they've got some of that in the third one, but, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's, it's okay, I guess. It's not too bad. Um... Once again, uh, Shittle Abed returns, and <clears throat> this is probably his worst performance. <coughs> there was a scene where him and Rosie Huntington Whitley were <clears throat> driving in the car. They were driving to the like the base, <clears throat> like a national military base, and like like the car wasn't lifted up or something. And he was screaming. He was like, "Wah, wah!" You were just you were just like, "Dude, shut up!" Yeah. So <sighs> Shittle Abed's in this again. Um, in terms of new people in this film, we have some some in new interesting characters. I mean, we have obviously given the fact that the last supermodel that was cast that was in the series was was called the director Hitler. So Michael Bay has hired another supermodel to fill in the role, and her name is Rosie Huntington Whitley, and she's British, which is which is nice, and yeah, she's better. That's the question. That was the big question. Was she better than um, Megan Fox in the first two? And yeah, she is. I don't think her acting is particularly brilliant at all. I mean, but I just think that she she's a lot better than Megan Fox. She's more likable, and you know, I think she's more attractive in the right light. <coughs> yes, um, and you know, there's some because I didn't believe the relationship between Megan Fox and Shitalabed in the first two films. Um, I mean, it was just sort of like she was along for the ride, just because, you know, his, his car could transform and kill stuff, so, yeah, but, um, no, this new girl is likeable, and, um, yeah, that's, that's her on the back there, there, there she is, yeah, she's very, she's likeable, she's nice, <clears throat> um, the story, 
here's the thing. The story is good, <clears throat> or it's better than the, the second one anyway. I mean, I'm, I, well, I like the idea of the second one, though. The origins of the Transformers, they went back to to that, but it did get a bit confuddled at certain points and didn't really take off for a while. This, again, doesn't really take off until like after an hour into the film. I don't know why Michael Bay does this. Actually, no, wrong. We get sort of hints about Dark of the Moon and, you know, the opening, like, there is a plot, you know, <clears throat> the first, like, you know, the first, like, there are scenes that do forget about the plot, like, towards the final battle, there are moments when you're just like, have they, what is actually going on, why are they fighting again? Oh, yeah, you will tend, to, because they forget about the plot, you may forget about the plot as well. <coughs> Visual effects, yeah, again, are awesome. And the action is terrific, even though it's very spread out. Like, the first action scene is like 15 minutes in, and then the next action scene is an hour into the film. And then um, <clears throat> the rest of the action is the last hour of the film. So they save most of the action till the last hour of the film, which is really weird, but it's the way they wanted to do it, Michael Bay. I mean, I, I'm not being funny, but, you know, <clears throat> if I was editing this film, I would not... I'd say to Michael Bay, look, this this battle sequence is looking pretty long. I don't think 60 minutes is right for a final battle sequence. Um, or at least at least one in Transformers, because pretty much Transformers action is just all the same explosions and stuff. When you have that for an hour straight <coughs> on the trot, <coughs> it becomes a bit full on. Um, yeah, in terms of other good things... Uh, Dylan Gould, uh, the guy that plays Dylan, uh, Patrick Dempsey, he is terrific. <clears throat> he is, and you know, and I'm going to say this now, the best performance by a mile is Patrick Dempsey <clears throat> as Dylan. He doesn't really get much to do, but when he's there, he's great. I really like his scenes, and <clears throat> you can tell from the beginning that he's a bit of a creep. Um, yeah. I like, there's a lot, the action in this is done a lot better actually, there's, it's not just like thrown on there, they've actually thought how can we make this diverse and interesting, they've actually, like the freeway chase, that was really good, um, the thing with the worm, like going into the building and them sliding down the building and shooting the glass, that was cool, that was done well, <coughs> but it's just towards the end, it's like, it's kind of similar it's 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 not as bad in Man of Steel, but like in Man of Steel, it gets there's a lot of action towards the end, and it's just like becomes a bit tiresome. I mean, it's worse in this film because this goes on the last bat the, the last battle goes on for an hour. My God, it's long, and this movie is a, is way too long. It's 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 154 minutes. It's the longest Transformers film. It's just it's too long. It's it's just outrageously long. Um, <clears throat> John Malkovich is great. Like. He's only, he's pretty much a prolonged cameo, but he's fine. Uh, Rances McDormand, she's good as well. Um, why is John Turturro in the film? I mean, I'm not saying that I don't like his character, I just don't really understand why he has to be in there. He's not really a main part of the story. Well, he sort of is for a bit, and then he's just sort of there. And he has a, like a, he has like a sidekick, like a henchman. He was, he was cool. Dutch. Um. He was quite cool. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, in terms of characters, you only care for like a couple of them. Like you don't really care for the characters that much, which is a shame. Yeah, the parents are back, but they only appear twice, so it's not a big problem. Like, and they're not as annoying as they were in like the first, in the second one. Well, it's mainly the mum that was annoying, but the dad was all right. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this is a good film. I like the plot. I like the story. I just, it's it. I don't always tend to watch. You can't casually watch this, partly because it's so long, and because you just won't, you just won't really care about characters. You know, when I watch a film, I have to sort of invest in what's going on. I have to care about what's going on. And in certain moments of Transformers Three, I didn't really care. Um, it's a shame, really. Uh, the direction by Michael Bay is okay. I mean, it's not brilliant, but <clears throat> it's sort of just directed in that sort of style of like, yeah, let's just just you know make something. It's just like let's just put this on there and see what, how that goes. 
it's just sort of directed with just the high octane action thing. Well, if you if you sort of understand my drift, <clears throat> it was kind of more prominent in the second film. But yeah, the pace of this film is an, is a problem as well. Like the first hour is quite slow, um, so you could yeah, like I said, the movie's too long. So <clears throat> you, you could at least at least lose about you know. This this absolutely could lose half an hour of its runtime. It really could. I said this before in the other reviews. You know, this they they focus way too much on the human characters. Like I don't care about Chesley Bed getting a job and going to college um, and stuff. But you know, I, I don't know. Like if you call it Transformers: Dark of the Moon, make it about the Transformers. Like that's why I hope um, in Transformers Four that you know Mark Wahlberg's character is not going to be the at the forefront of the story. I'm I'm all right if he's in there as long as they don't focus on him like too much. Like I know you have to have human characters in there, but you can't don't make it all about him because they make this all about shit a bit to be quite honest. But but yeah, no um it the action is superb, visual effects are great, but it's just pretty much it's just more of the same really and it drags on and it's way too long and the ending is very abrupt. It's just like after this moment where Sam, uh, sorry, Chester Lebed and um, Rosie Huntington Whitley run towards each other, and then they sort of, he's sort of like holding her, and then they're like, they're like kissing passion passionately. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then it just sort of Bumblebee does something, and then, and then Optimus Prime gives a speech, and then, oh, credits. You're like, oh, that's it then. It just feels a little bit abrupt for some reason. It's not. A major problem but I just can't help but notice it. It just felt a bit weird. I was like, oh alright then. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I for what it's worth, I think this is this is an alright film. You know, it's not bad. It's better than the second one I I'd say. So it's good. Uh, it has its moments. I really like Patrick Dempsey's part. He plays the his part really well. It's just a bad I'm just so he he just irritated me in this film more than any of the others. Rose Hunter Whitley was good. She's she's hot. She's sexy. She's attractive. She's not the best actress in the world, but you know, for a first time, not not too bad. Still got a lot to learn though. Um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's 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 just fun. Some of the comedy is annoying. Some of it is okay, and it's just a bit slow starting, and it's way too long. So, yep, I'm going to give Transformers: Dark of the Moon. 6 out of 10. I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's not it's not amazing, but I can watch this casually and enjoy it. It's just it's a movie without much character development, which is odd considering how long it is and yeah, well then again, we've, I guess they've already sort of developed just Lebed's character in the first two films. But yep, that's that's pretty much it. So yeah, my review of the Transformers films are done. Until until I review Age of Extinction, which I will do at some point. I don't know when, but whenever I see it. I think it comes out in July or something, so it'll be in a couple of months or so. Um I mean today's the thirty first of May, so yeah, it's it, it all depends really. Anyway. Thank you all for watching, as always I'm Mr. Tyler's Eleven. See ya.